For years, fans have been clamoring for a new, proper Metroid 2D platformer. It's been seven years since our most recent outing with Samus, who last appeared in Metroid Other M. While I actually liked and defended it, Other M didn't hit all the notes that old school Metroid fans had come to expect from the series. So you can imagine my surprise at this year's E3 when Nintendo not only announced Metroid Prime 4, but dropped some gameplay footage of Metroid Samus Returns after their press conference. For a reveal and a new entry in one of Nintendo's premier franchises, the announcement was shockingly low-key. But it's out today and in our collectible hungry hands. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. This week, we're tackling Metroid Samus Returns, which comes out today. For your information, I did receive this game for free from Nintendo, hashtag free product. However, my views are mine and mine alone, hashtag not an ad. I can say whatever I want, whenever I want. I also did get this game early, similarly to those gaming news outlets like Polygon, Kotaku, and IGN. Now, Super Metroid is legitimately one of my favorite games of all time. You may have seen me recently streaming the game in a 100% randomized run on my Twitch channel, where every item in the game is completely randomized at any given playthrough. I have always loved Super Metroid. It's tough, it's fun, but it teaches you a lot of how to play the game without giving you any kind of crazy tutorial to go into it. Metroid 2 was a game that I always wanted to play, but growing up, I never really had the chance because during the Game Boy era, I was too young to have money to buy things. Ironically enough, I have been working on a Metroid 2 Return of Samus video when all of a sudden, Nintendo announced Metroid Samus Returns. After spending a little time with it, I'm stoked to find out if Metroid Samus Returns is indeed a great return to what makes those old Metroidvania 2D platform games so awesome. Let's begin. Yes! Right. Interestingly, despite being developed by a Japanese company, the 2D Metroid games were never really huge hits in Japan. However, they did find their audience in the West, selling huge in North America. As a result, as the years went on, we saw fewer and fewer 2D Metroid games coming out of Japan, while fellow first-party Nintendo series like Mario and Zelda saw regular development. But that doesn't mean that the fans of Metroid haven't been demanding new 2D Metroid games for years. One particularly dedicated fan, going by Dr. M64, even went so far as to create AM2R, a remake of Metroid 2, drawing inspiration from the visuals of Super Metroid and the gameplay of Metroid's Fusion and Zero Mission. It was even released on the 30th anniversary of Metroid last year. Unfortunately, Nintendo DMCA'd the project, but with good reason. That reason being Metroid Samus Returns. On that note, shoutouts to Dr. M64 and the whole team that worked on an incredible fan game. See, this is where Mercury Steam comes into the picture. With the release of Metroid Samus Returns, the Spain-based developer is now the first Western studio to release an official side-scrolling Metroid game. Welcome to the scene, boys! So who is Mercury Steam? Interestingly, Samus Returns isn't the developer's first foray into the world of Metroidvania-style games. After working on the criminally underrated, and fight me on this, you bitches, Clive Barker's Jericho in 2007, Mercury Steam got their hands on the Castlevania series dropping Lords of Shadows 1 and 2. Two games that, while somewhat divisive amongst Castlevania fans, I thought were pretty solid entries. Their reputation shows that they've got a touch for underappreciated gems, making Mercury Steam the perfect fit for a Metroid 2 remake. This project was never actually supposed to happen, at least like this. In a recent interview with Game Informer, Yoshio Sakamoto, the game director behind Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, and Metroid Zero Mission, revealed that Mercury Steam had originally pitched it as a remake of Metroid Fusion, but Nintendo ultimately turned it down. However, Sakamoto still believed in the team and wanted to work with them on a different Metroid remake for the Nintendo 3DS. Apparently, they settled on rejuvenating Metroid 2. Metroid 2 was the perfect candidate for a remake. Barely anyone played it when it first came out on the original Game Boy, especially compared to other Nintendo titles like Super Mario Land. But it's still a core entry in the series. The NES Metroid already got its very own remake in Metroid Zero Mission. Plus, nobody should be touching Super Metroid with a 10-foot pole. It's already perfect. 
Seriously, stay away from Super Metroid. You're already getting close to ruining your secret of mana. Leave us alone! Because Metroid 2 was released on the comparably weak system in the Game Boy, it's just too simple to be given a graphics update and released back into the open. It needed a lot more work than just that. Thankfully, Mercury Steam was up to the challenge. Metroid Samus Returns is a fully reworked game, taking influence from all corners of the Metroid universe and combining them with the original's locale to create something inspired by, but not directly copying, the 1991 release. Ultimately, I'm so so excited at the opportunity to play Metroid Samus Returns, especially with all the 26 years of gaming inspiration that it can now draw from. However, on that same note, looking back, I'm also terrified of all 26 of those years when it comes to completing this game. It's not even the collectibles or the narrative aspect of this completionist run that I'm stressing out about. But if this game has learned anything from Super Metroid, there's a good chance that there's going to be a massive speedrunning element to the game that I'm going to have to reckon with at some point. I also know that there will likely be a hard mode which will unlock either by beating the game or tapping into the amiibo on my 3D. Yes. In other words, I have got a long Metroid road ahead of me, boys. My plan is to beat the game once through on normal to get a good idea of the collectibles and their locations before I dive right back in to get my ass handed to me in hard mode. But I am ready for that challenge. This is my time to shine. This is the moment that my randomized Super Metroid runs have been leading up to for years. My mind is sharp, my eyes are able to spot missile upgrades from a mile away, and my thumbs are buffer than they've ever been. Let's go, Metroid. I'm ready to take you down. Without a doubt, Nintendo is all about the nostalgia and legacy of all of their franchises, and Metroid is no different. But Metroid Samus Returns isn't just a remake, it's a full-on reimagining of an older game that is clearly influenced by the games that came after it. As someone who's never played Metroid 2, I don't really have a horse in this race. But with my knowledge of the Metroid Prime series, Super Metroid, and Metroid Fusion, I can already tell that Metroid Samus Returns is heavily and wonderfully inspired by the entirety of the Metroid franchise, while remembering it's got a job to do in sticking to its original Metroid 2 roots. Just for some backstory, Metroid Samus Returns picks up directly after the events of the original Metroid game. Samus just defeated Mother Brain on planet Zebus. Zebus, you guys can argue in the comments how to pronounce it bringing down the evil space pirate's plan to use the life-absorbing Metroids to take over the galaxy. Now, mind you, the Galactic Federation sent Samus in alone to complete this particular mission. They had literally just an entire squadron of dudes taken out by the space pirates, and what was their plan? To send in Samus, a bounty hunter, by herself to wipe out an entire army of space pirates? Not a great look here, guys. Just maybe consider getting a better backup plan next time. You're supposed to be the leaders of the free galaxy here and these are the decisions you're making come on immediately after samus's success the federation discovers that the metroid's home planet is sr388 and rather than dealing with their apparent space pirate problem they sent in a squad to clean up sr388 that squad got bodied so hard by the metroids that they decided to send in samus on yet another solo mission to wipe out every last one of them Really, guys? You couldn't come up with a better idea than, hey, that Iran lady did a kick-ass job last time. Let's have her commit genocide against an alien species on the off chance that some disorganized pirate faction figures out where they're breeding and decides to use them for evil again. That was your actual, real, unanimous decision here, Federation. Come on, at least give Samus some backup, just a little bit. As aggravating as the Federation's, quite frankly, terrible planning may be, it's nice to see that Mercury Steam did mess up the plot of Metroid 2. It's not that the plot is particularly any good, it's more that Samus Returns is a love letter to the original version of the game, and changing the plot seems a bit blasphemous, even if there wasn't much of one to begin with. But when it comes to graphics, I expect that things would be vastly improved, particularly because the original game came out on the gray brick Game Boy more than 25 years ago. 
And things have changed a lot since then. Thankfully, Samus Returns lives up to my expectations thus far. The remake looks absolutely gorgeous, from the superb updates to enemy designs, to the cool as hell particle effects coming out of Samus' arm cannon, to the massive bosses in the game's three major fights. As an update to the previous game's pixelated style, the look of Samus Returns both harkens back to the first two titles while bringing them into the 3D future, and does so near flawlessly. Granted, it still has the same flaws that any polygonal 3DS game is going to have, the edges of characters are still jaggy and uneven, making it look like a game from a previous console generation. But just imagine how stunning this would look if it had come out on the Switch! Give me that big screen, Nintendo, please! Here's an interesting choice that Mercury Steam made. They barely used any sound or music from the original Metroid 2. Instead, they went ahead and pulled music from other Metroid games, with most of the inspiration coming from Super Metroid, updated for the 3DS. That's why you'll hear the Lower Norfair theme whenever you wander into a fiery area, despite being nowhere near even Upper Norfair. It's a little bit of a bummer because the original Metroid 2 music is haunting, bizarre, and sometimes downright terrifying. I'd like to have seen a bit more love paid to those Game Boy bips and boops than we got, but to be fair, there wasn't that many soundtracks in the original Metroid 2, so... I get it. By far, the biggest change from Return of Samus to Samus' Return is the addition of a map. Of course, the Game Boy only had a single screen, making it impossible to display both Samus' antics and the map at the same time. But it didn't even have a map in the pause menu to show off what you had already explored. The addition of a map in this game is a godsend for those trying to figure out where the hell they're going to go during their time in the caverns of SR388. The fact that all of the info in the game including your energy and Aeon bars, missile and bomb counts, and weapon selections are on the lower screen, frees the upper screen to show off the gameplay itself giving the game a clean, gameplay-focused look. And with how great everything looks in the main game, that's a welcomed addition. If you get a chance, though, take a second to look around at some of the backgrounds in Samus Returns. It's rare to see a 3DS game show that much attention to detail, but the backgrounds here are absolutely gorgeous. There's just so much going on back there, it's almost hard to believe that this thing is a remake and not an original game. The bottom screen, however, is definitely a little bit clustered, but considering the amount of information it's displaying and the amount of utility it provides, I can't get too mad about that. Overall, from a presentation standpoint, I couldn't have imagined a better love letter to a series I've been a fan of for years. This is what Metroid looks and sounds like in my head, so either it looks stunning or I have something seriously wrong with me. Can anyone help me out? Seriously? I'm, I'm seeing 3D polygonal things. Either that or the game, game looks nice. I don't know what's going on anymore. Please help. Please, please help. Metroid Samus Returns is a Metroid-ass Metroid game. It's simultaneously your dad's Metroid game and not your dad's Metroid game. It takes everything that's great about the classic titles and updates them for a modern audience. Everything you'd expect from a 2D Metroid game is here. You're gonna be running around, climbing walls, blowing up walls to create new paths, collecting power-ups and new abilities, and generally just doing the stuff that Samus has always done. But it's important to note that things have changed in the last 25 plus years. Thanks to the 3DS and its circumstances, pads, Samus can now shoot in full 360 degrees. She's got a bunch of new abilities that weren't present in the original titles, and it's all just a matter of how you use them to complete your mission of demolishing every single Metroid you come across. Some of the franchise returning abilities include exactly what you'd expect. The Morph Ball can roll you into tight spaces, the Grapple Beam can pull you around and swing you across gaps, missiles and super missiles blow up destructible walls, and the Screw Attack lets you fly around the whole game in the sky, blowing up enemies that dare cross your path. However, Metroid 2 was the first game to introduce a slew of new abilities, including the wall climbing spider ball, the infinite space jump, and the enemy and wall piercing plasma beam. Of course, all of those abilities make their way into Samus Returns, along with a whole bunch of new ones. Chief among those is the Aeon abilities, which give you four new features in your suit. First, and perhaps most importantly, is the scan ability, which reveals the map in an area around Samus, even showing off where hidden items are. For your old buddy the completionist here, this was an outright revelation. I can find every last thing without having to shoot missiles randomly at every wall in the game? Make my life easy, Mercury Steam, I love you so much. Plus, if you think that makes the game way too easy and want a little more of an old school hardcore experience, you know, you can just 
not use it. F***ing willpower. You can use the other Aeon abilities to stave off some damage with lightning armor, increase your firepower with beam blast, or slow down time with the phase drift ability. Each and every one of the Aeon abilities are used to help you solve puzzles and collect power-ups, just like you'd expect in a Metroid game. But nothing is used in combat as often as the brand new melee counterattack. Almost every enemy in the game at some point will dive at you to deal some damage. If you time hitting X perfectly, Samus will counterattack, freeing up a few precious seconds to blow away whoever deigned come at the queen. Not Queen Metroid or Yas Queen, but you know, Samus. She's my queen. The move can't take a while to get the hang of it, and sometimes it feels a bit clunky, but once you get the hang of it, you'll feel like a total and utter badass. While it is fun that almost every enemy in the game has this mechanic, it's a bit frustrating that every single combat encounter utilizes it. Typically in Metroid games, if you spend the time to get good, you can figure out new creative ways to take out enemies and bosses. But by making one, albeit basic ability, so prevalent in Samus Returns, it can feel like you're being forced down a singular combat path. Hey, remember that super basic thing you learned at the very beginning of the goddamn game? Yeah, it ain't going away. And really, isn't that what Metroid games are supposed to be all about? You learn its core simple mechanics, get good enough with them to move on to the next area, and are rewarded with a power-up to make you feel even more powerful than before. It's a deeply satisfying rhythm of gameplay that never felt tired in any Metroid game. And it definitely doesn't feel tired here, despite some combat repetitiveness. But it can get a little stale. The term Metroidvania comes from combining the names Metroid and Castlevania to create this particular beloved genre. And with that title comes, you guessed it, backtracking. With every new ability, you can get to new areas, freeing up any unlocks that may lay within. Your main mission in every run of Metroid Samus Returns is to bring down exactly 40 Metroids that are strewn throughout the map. Apparently, these little buggy dudes are extremely endangered to the point where a lone bounty hunter can wipe out their entire species for the sake of the Federation. Yay! When I first encountered some of the more difficult types of Metroids, I got destroyed. But as time went on, I figured out their patterns and became a Metroid slamming machine. They can get a little repetitive as time goes on, but thankfully Metroids aren't the only bosses in the game. I won't spoil them here, but rest assured the others are very, very challenging, visually impressive, and are a nice change of pace. Of course, most of my time in Samus Returns was spent finding literally every single upgrade in the game, and man, there are a lot of them. By the time I finished the game, I had gone from a mere 20 missiles in my suit to 264, all by collecting three at a time. I had gone from 99 energy to 1099 at a time. I had gone from, you know what, just rest assured, it was a lot, but there is a problem here. At a certain point in the game, I felt like I had gone from a puny squeamish Samus to an outright god almost in a single power-up. I'll let you figure that one out for yourselves. It would have been nice to have a smoother difficulty progression, as it made the last few sections of the game just a tad too easy for my tastes. And that's not even with me going after every item. That's just natural game progression. You kicked my ass throughout 70% of the game, Mercury Steam. So what's up with that difficulty drop? Punish me, Dad and continue to punish me. Now, that's just all of my first playthrough, though. By the end of it, I sounded like an old-timey stand-up comedian saying, I collected my way all the way here from Zebus, and boy, are my hands tired. Uh, that was really stupid. Can we just cut that from the video, please? That's just really embarrassing. For you Nintendo enthusiasts, there are four amiibo unlocks for you to toy around with, and they're actually helpful. The Super Smash Bros. Samus amiibo unlocks concept art and a reserve missile supply, which replenishes your total missile cap when you run out. The Super Smash Bros. Zero Suit Samus unlocks even more concept art and music tracks, as well as a reserve energy tank for up to two bars of energy. The brand new Samus Return Samus amiibo unlocks even more art and a reserve energy on take. And finally, the Metroid amiibo will show you the location of any Metroid you haven't hunted yet. It's all a bit overkill, but useful nonetheless. My main complaint over just anything else in this game is the way the controls feel. Because you can do so much in Samus Returns, the control scheme has to be a little bit complicated, something that the 3DS isn't all that great at. The buttons are small, somewhat close together, and definitely led my hands to cramping up at times. Plus, you have to use 
use the circle pad for movement, which doesn't feel great in a relatively difficult 2D platformer. I would have loved to have had the ability to change up the control scheme. Platforming and doing basic moves like changing into the morph ball would have been a million times easier had I been able to switch over to the D-pad in the option screen. I'd gladly give up 360 degree aiming for a little bit just to have an easier time in some of the tougher platforming sections. Even if I just had the ability to toggle between my beams and missiles via a button rather than using the touch screen, that would have been a massive help in my gameplay. Patch update Nintendo, please? Please? Huh? <laughs> Come on, you know what? Please! <laughs> Just fun to... uh, Please! The thing I love most about Metroid Samus Returns is the fact that it's an amalgamation of everything I love about Metroid games. It takes influence from Metroid 2, obviously, Super Metroid, the Metroid Prime series, and, well, just about all of the Metroid games I could think of. It's like one crazy Metroid sandwich. So let's make a sandwich! Hello everyone and welcome back to the video game show. Today, my name is Jared, your host, and we're gonna be making a sandwich based off the great video game franchise, Metroid. Welcome to making Metroid Sandwich Returns. Let's begin. First, we're gonna go over the ingredients that you need to make this sandwich. First up, you need a knife to cut everything. Second, you need your Metroid 2 Return of Samus bread. You can get this at Trader Joe's. You can get everything I say today at Trader Joe's. Uh, sponsor us. Second, you can get your Metroid Prime series barbecue sauce for a little drizzle, and more importantly, our Super Metroid Mystery Meat, but we're not leaving that. We're not revealing that till the end of the show, so stick around for that. First, you're gonna just cut the bread. Just give it a good cut. Give it a good cut. Get all the innards of that Metroid out. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Boom! There you go! After you've cut your bread, you're gonna wanna take your Metroid Prime sauce and just glue it. Just glue it. Ladies, if you're trying to impress your man, try real hard to just lose a little drizzle. Just a little drizzle. Last but not least, you're gonna need your mystery meat. In this case, it's our Super Metroid mystery meat, which is... Bacon, yes, bacon. Super Metroid bacon, just take a couple of strips, and you are A-A-OK. -okay. You know, we don't have enough Super Metroid in this sandwich, we're gonna keep putting a lot more Super Metroid. Just really get all the Super Metroid in on the sandwich. Very important stuff. You know, I'm really happy with the sandwich, but I think it's missing something. It's missing a little more Super Metroid. So we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit more just on the top, really important stuff. That reminds me, this sandwich is on the 3DS, so we're gonna have to just kind of cut it in half as best we can, just to kind of try it and just remember that you can only enjoy this sandwich when you are on the go and not in your own home, so you have to be moving somewhere when you eat it. Very important stuff. And there you have it, the Metroid Sandwich Return Sandwich. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Be sure to get your hungry dosing of nostalgia every day at this website. We don't have a website, whatever this is. This is a joke. I've been Jared, and this is The Video Game Show. The fascinating thing about Metroid Samus Returns is that while it looks, breathes, and feels like a 3DS game, it ultimately ends up being more like the original Super Metroid than I once thought. It brings the heat for completionists and speedrunners. Super Metroid lives and breathes in the ideas of collectibles, and it's an institution that has been established since then, and Samus Returns does not mess around. If you backtracked your way throughout your entire journey and got every single item in the game, you'll get access to a gallery called the Chozo Memories. There are 10 Chozo Memories all together. As you complete the game, bit by bit, they will unlock, but if you get all of them, the game will glitch out and show you a special 11th secret one. Cool beans, man. Upon beating the game, after seeing the ending, you'll be shown an end screen featuring Samus and your clear time. Going in completely blind, I honestly felt very ashamed at my first 100% playthrough, but honestly, I didn't try to do it that fast at first. I just wanted to enjoy the game, but I see you, Metroid. I know your tricks. 
beating the game will in fact unlock hard mode. Within hard mode, you take double the damage, so you're going to be dying a lot. There's no real indicator that you're playing it on hard mode other than the file itself in the save screen. I can confirm that getting 100% does nothing extra on hard mode, especially because the game keeps all the content unlocked as you progress, and hard mode is only accessible in the same files as the one you did before. I recommend backing up a save just in case. In terms of reaching the end, however, my final end screen time was just as bad as my normal run because I kept dying a lot. But I did notice that Samus was doing a different pose, which only got my nerves going even more. Especially because if you buy the Metroid Amiibo and use it after you've beaten the game, you will unlock Fusion Mode. Fusion Mode isn't just the Fusion Suit from Metroid Fusion. Oh no. It's actually more like very, very hard mode. You'll take even more damage and it's so ruthless. Nonetheless, I beat that 100%. And sure enough, my fears, my thoughts, my dreams were crushed. I knew it to be true, and I never wanted to be more wrong in my life. In Super Metroid, if you beat the game under three hours, Samus appears in a bikini-type suit. Back in the day, this was kind of the secret for the Metroid franchise, but depending on your time determined how much her clothing had changed. Well, strap yourselves in, boys and girls, because when I shaved off enough time for my fusion run, Samus was posing in her fusion suit without her helmet on, which means one thing. If you beat the game under 8 hours, or maybe 10 hours, I'm not sure because the game doesn't tell you it just came out, you'll get an ending where Samus does not have her helmet, which means that I'm going to have to speedrun this game more and more until I get to the point where I find out if Samus does have a different ending pose other than the helmet not being there. Now here lies the biggest of hurdles I've had in quite some time. I'm flying in blind. This game is too large to complete, with 100% under a certain time. So what I theorized is that if I have to beat this game under the benchmark of maybe four hours, getting any combination of items in the way will net me these new ending poses. But I have no idea if I'll actually get anything. So I came up with this ultimate plan. Just bear with me for a moment. First, me and Bradley, one of the editors here on the show, sat down and edited my entire playthrough of normal and hard mode playthroughs to try and find the best routes that I could possibly take. Second, at the same time as that, we took photos of each and every map that I could from the bottom screen of the 3DS. This was difficult because the bottom screen only shows you so much at a time, so we had to gently move the cursor bit by bit and piece these things together frame by frame. Third, we then photoshopped these maps together as one big image, knowing the location of each and every item in the game, the Metroids, the secrets along the way. We then took our Let's Play footage and compared them to these maps zone by zone and drew lines for the most optimum of routes that we could. And from there, I would then realize that I have to beat the game not once, not twice, but three times on a whim, on a freaking whim that maybe I was right to get something or maybe that maybe this thing doesn't exist. I have no idea. I became a god at Samus Returns and what felt like a scary pit in my stomach it scared the living hell out of me that maybe this is the one this is the one game that I cannot complete as the completionist and maybe I f***ed up maybe I f***ed up but I was right there was something <laughs> When you beat Samus Returns on normal mode under four hours, it turns out I was on the money. Samus appears in her Zero Suit outfit and does a pose. When I did this again on hard mode, Samus was in her Metroid 1 Classic outfit, the one from the end of the game. And when I did it on Fusion mode, Samus was in what I think is her Super Metroid outfit. Holy crap, I know this may not be a big deal to some, but to do what I did in the same time frame and in the manner of this show, for the first time in a long while, I am genuinely proud of my skill as a gamer. In my playthrough of Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS, there were three full 100% playthroughs on normal, hard, and fusion modes. Seven additional difficult speedrun attempts with three successful runs on normal, hard, and fusion mode, meaning I played this game for a total of 10 goddamn times. 11 unlockable Chozo memories, 52 hours of total playtime, and 
One sense of feeling accomplished for doing my job. Seriously, I am beaming with happiness that I got it right without knowing anything but this. Metroid Samus Returns is that game that will bring everyone back to the core of Metroid. However, the controls, lack of customization, and the difficulties ups and downs in the game are enough to upset some people. But that all comes down to a matter of preference. I know the pun is dumb, and I'm sure there's tons of headlines out there that have already made it. Metroid Samus Returns is in fact just that. Samus has returned. If you love anything about Metroid and the franchise itself, this game is the one for you. I could not be happier with Metroid Samus Returns. Metroid fans, rejoice and show your support. This game is a wonderful return to form for the franchise that, theoretically speaking, could lead to more and more 2D Metroid titles. Now, the few problems I did have with the game are problems I know most people won't have issues with, but they did resonate with me the entire playthrough. My hands are exhausted from the amount of hours that I've been playing that I've put into this game. And for the first time in a long time here in the show, while I went through hell and back, beating this game no less than nine times, speedrunning in normal, hard, and fusion mode, I gotta say, I have got a massive, overwhelming sense of accomplishment. One that I haven't felt in a long while. I'm in a special zone here because I may be one of the first people ever to have seen this special imagery that awaited for me each and every time through. Completionists out there, you're gonna have a great time from start to finish, and you're gonna feel even better when you conquer that massive mountain. Everyone else, well, that's on you and how you play games, but you will have an awesome time nonetheless. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of complete it. Complete it! That's all the time we have for today, guys, so please, as always, let me know about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like what you see here, you like what we do, hit that like button and uh, click the subscribe button in the bubble below. All the names you see on the left here are all of our cool folks on Patreon. They support us each and every week. If you want to join them on this list, click the link in the description box below. And if you missed last week's episode on Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, you can give that a click or tap right here on screen. I've been Gerard the Completionist, and I'm going to be sleeping for the next week. Goodbye.